everlasting father we are gathered here because of your name everlasting god take your place and have your way
Jesus' name. I want us to go into a mood of prayer, and um, I know we are already in that mood of worship. I want us to pray for a few minutes before we sit down to hear the word of God. Uh, today, being our day of prayer and fasting, uh, we've been fasting and praying on God to establish us. And uh, the people who are, who are on the platform, the WhatsApp platform, uh, will know that we've been praying for God's establishment. That God may establish our lives, that God may establish our families, that God may establish our finances, that God may establish our church, and that God may establish our nation, Kenya. That's what we've been praying about today. And I want to read one verse, then we can be able to pray for a few minutes, then we enter to hearing the word of God. I want to read from the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter number 3, and verse number 3. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, and verse number 3, please. Now the Bible says, but the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. One of the things that we must understand as we ask God to establish us is that whenever God establishes you, no devil can destabilize you. When God establishes a man, no devil, no witchcraft, no enemy, no opposition can destabilize that man. And, 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 and the Bible is saying that God is faithful. He will, who will establish you, he will establish your life he will establish your family. He will establish the works of your hands. And when you are established by God, it is not like being established by a man. When a man establishes another man, he can destabilize him. But when you are, estab when you are established by God, then no devil can destabilize you. And I want us to pray today. For a few minutes, I want you to wind up your prayer and your fasting today with this prayer that God will establish you. Ask the Lord, establish my life, establish my family, establish my marriage, establish my business, establish our church, establish our nation, Kenya. Because when God establishes us, then we begin to be fruitful in life, we begin to succeed in life, and no devil can be able to bring us down, no devil can destabilize us, because the Lord has already established us. So I want you to lift up your voice to God and ask him to establish your life, establish your family, and everything that is called by your name. Now open up your mouth and begin to call upon the name of the Lord and let him establish you because when you are established by God, no devil can destabilize you. No man can destabilize you. No battle can destabilize you. When God establishes you, you are established and no devil can defeat your life. No opposition can bring you down. No battle can defeat you in the mighty name of Jesus. Call upon the name of the Lord. Ask him to establish your life. Ask him to establish you in salvation. Ask him to establish you in your finances. In every area of your life, let God establish you. Let God establish your marriage. Let God establish your family. Let God establish your ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. He is faithful. He will. 
will establish us. He is faithful. He will establish your family. He is faithful. He will establish your marriage. He is faithful. He will establish our nation, Kenya. In the mighty name of Jesus. My Father, my God, I pray, oh God, that you will establish me in every area of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you will establish my family, dear Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that you will establish my marriage, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Rebo Shaka Bagadaya. I understand, oh God, when you establish me, when you establish my family, when you establish my marriage, no devil can destabilize us. No enemy can bring us down. Lord, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, establish us, oh God, as a family establish us, as a people establish us, in the mighty name of Jesus. My father, I pray, establish me financially in the mighty name of Jesus. Establish my business, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. When you establish my business, there will be no loss. There will be no success. We shall succeed in the business. When you establish us in our businesses, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, dear Father, the Lord God Almighty, in your mercy, you shall establish this ministry. Jesus, outreach ministry, establish this ministry in you. Establish this ministry in holiness. Establish this ministry in success. Establish this ministry in breakthrough. Establish this ministry, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Establisher of men. And Lord, 
tonight as we are in your house today we call upon your name that you establish each one of us oh god establish us in you oh god establish us in holiness oh god establish us in purity jehovah establish us in salvation in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we call upon your name, O oh God, that you establish us in every area of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you to establish our families, establish our marriages, O oh God, establish us financially in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, when you establish us, no devil can destabilize us. And therefore, Father, we call upon your name that you establish each one of us. Establish us, O oh God. Establish this ministry. Establish this ministry in you. Establish this ministry in your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Make this ministry immovable. Make this ministry unshakable. In the mighty name of Jesus. That no devil will shake this ministry. That no enemy will shake this ministry. Lord, establish this ministry in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we declare because of your establishment, this ministry will not be moved. This ministry will not be shaken in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you and we worship your name. Lord, we lift up our nation, Kenya, in your hands, oh God. We ask you to establish this nation, oh God. Establish this nation, oh Jehovah, in a way that it will not be shaken by the enemies. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever the devil has planned against this nation, Lord, by you establishing this nation, let the enemy be disgraced. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you, Jehovah, establish this nation in holiness. Establish this nation in the fear of you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, let everything concerning this nation favor the people of the land. Yes, Lord. Establish us as a nation to the honor and to the glory of your holy name. We thank you, we worship you, and we honor you today. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Everybody shout a big amen. amen. Put your hands together for the Lord amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When God establishes a man, that man cannot be destabilized by the enemy. We declare that our lives are established, our families are established, our church is established, and our nation is established by the hand of God. In Jesus' precious name. Let us put our hands together for the praise team as they get back to their seats in the name of Jesus Christ. You may also take your seat in the presence of the Lord even as we go to hear the word of God. We want to welcome our online viewers and uh, we want to appreciate you and we want you to know that we value you and we thank you for every time you join us in our services and we are believing God that even today because you have joined us the Lord will bless you as he blesses us in the house today. I want to bring the word of God because we have about 25 minutes remaining before we come to the end of the service. And I want to read the Bible from the book of First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. I know we read this uh, in the last uh, one month. We have used this scripture. I want to use this scripture today and I also want to use uh, the book of Marakai chapter 1 and verse number 6. But let's begin with uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse number 30. Bible says, therefore the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me, but now the Lord says, far be it from me, for those who honor me I will honor. And those who despise me, 
I shall be lightly esteemed. Marakai chapter 1 and verse number 6. A son. You can also say that. Or honor is giving someone high regard. Honor is giving someone high regard. So when we are talking about honoring God, we are talking about esteeming God highly. Respecting God highly. Regarding God highly. And, 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 and this is what we are called to do. We are called to honor God. God deserves honor from men. And God seeks honor from men. God desires that we honor him. Not only with our lips, but even with our hearts. So the honor we are talking about is not lip service. It is not just by mouth that you are saying, I honor God with your mouth. God is not after lip service. God is after honor that comes from the heart. I will say that again. God is not after lip service. Or mouth service, whereby you say you honor him. But your actions speak otherwise. God desires that the honor that you give him comes from the heart. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 15 and verse 8. And I want us to read that. Matthew chapter 15 verse number 8. It says, these people draw near to me with their mouth. And honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. So God is not interested in the lip service. He is interested with people that will honor him from their hearts. Now, the scripture we have read, the first scripture we have read from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 2 and verse number 30, 
it is talking about the sons of Eri. When you read verse number 12 of the same chapter, please, can, we, can you give us verse number 12? You see, now the sons of Eri were corrupt and they did not know the Lord. In other words, these sons of Eri, they were wicked and they never honored God. I want you to understand this were the sons of the priest, of Eri the priest. And in extension, they were serving together with their father in the temple. But these two sons, they never honored God. They were wicked sons. And because they never honored God, that is why the Bible is saying in verse number 30, I want us to read again, verse 30. It says, therefore the Lord God of Israel says, I, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, Far be it from me. Why is God speaking like this? Because these two sons, they have failed to honor God. Now, but now the Lord says, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Verse 31. Now, let's see. Behold, the days are coming that I will cut off your arm and the arm of your father's house. In other words, there's a, there's a version that says, I will cut your strength and I will cut the strength of your father's house. Now, this is the one. The time is coming, then I will cut short your strength. Because of not honoring God, God is is instituting a curse upon the house of Eri and the reinage of Eri. One of the things that he, God is saying, I will cut the strength of the house and the reinage of Eri. That's the first thing. Because of dishonor, I will cut your strength. And, and number two, he says, there will be no old man in your lineage. Because you have dishonored me, then there will be no old man in your lineage. Then number three, he is saying, I had said I will have somebody serving me on the altar all the days of your life, but I have changed my mind. No one will serve me from my altar. Why? Because of dishonor. And then he said, number four, everyone in the lineage of Eli will die in their prime age. When they hit about 40, all of them begins to die. Why? Because they have refused to honor me. This is a serious issue. There are repercussions of not honoring God. Verse number 33 says, Every one of you that I do not cut off from the altar will be spared only blind your eyes with tears and to grieve your heart and all your descendants will die in, their, in the prime of life. That is the seriousness of not honoring God. There are several people that I want to mention today that never regarded or honored God. Number one person, I call him Pharaoh. Pharaoh. I want you to note in the book of Exodus, chapter number five, verse number one and verse number two. Now hear this. After more, afterward, Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, this is what the Lord, the Lord God of Israel says, let my people go so that they may hold a festival to me in the desert. Now hear verse 2, what Pharaoh says. Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey him and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord and I will not let 
Israel go. Now, he refused to honor God by refusing to honor the word of God that was delivered to him by Moses. But there were repercussions for not honoring God. There were ten plagues that were released in Egypt just because Pharaoh refused to honor God. Every time a man refuses to honor God, they are consequences. The, the, the firstborn of Pharaoh and all the firstborns in Egypt, they died. They were calamities upon calamities in the land of Egypt. The reason being, Pharaoh refused to honor God. Now, number two is those sons, Phinehas and Hophni, the sons of Eri, because they refused to honor God. And I would want you to read the entire chapter, especially you can begin from verse number 12 to verse number 36. You will be able to understand. These two sons, because of dishonoring God and what God said, that the generation of Eri will die young. Both of them died young. And to make the matters worse, they died in one day. Both of them, they died in a day. Why? Because they refused to honor God. Anytime you refuse to honor God, there are consequences. It is very important for us to honor God. There is another man by the name of Herod. Herod refused to honor God. When you read the Bible in the book of Acts chapter number 12, you can read from verse number 20 all the way to verse number 25. He refused, Herod refused to give glory to God. And because of refusing to honor God, he died a disgraceful death. He was eaten by worms. In fact, the Bible says when he appeared, and he, gave glory, he refused to give glory to God, the angel struck him, and he fell, and he was eaten up by worms. Why? Because he refused to regard God. He refused to honor God. Therefore, he died a disgraceful death. The next one is Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, you can read this in the book of Daniel, chapter number 4. You start with verse number 28 all the way to verse number 37. This man, he refused to regard God. He refused to honor God. He thought he was the one that he was keeping himself. He thought that all that he had acquired was because of his wisdom, because of his strength. Because of himself, he refused to regard God and he never honored God. And because of it, God made him an animal. And for seven good years, he was eating grass. He was in the forest. A king refused to honor God and he became an animal. And, and, and something that is very surprising is that after he, after he died, his son called Belshazzar took over. And Belshazzar did not learn from the mistake of his father. He continued to dishonor God. The Bible says he went to the temple and he took the cups of the temple, the holy cups from the temple, and he was using them in his house. To take wine. Holy anointed cups that are being used in the temple. He took them. And he was taking wine using these cups. And when he was in his house with his friends. A hand came out. And was writing on the wall. Mene, mene tekel. This is to mean that you have been weighed on the weighing scale of God. And you have been found wanting. And therefore, your kingdom has ended. Why? Because he refused to honor God. And, and let me say this. It is important for us 
to learn from the people that have gone before us. There are people who dishonored God and they suffered consequences. Now, it is very important for us to learn from those people that dishonored God, that where they, they, they fell, we will not fall. Very important. Belshazzar knew what happened to his father, Nebuchadnezzar. He knew because of not honoring God, he was an animal for seven years. But when he came to the throne, he did the same thing that his father did. He dishonored God. He dishonored God. And when he dishonored God, he saw a hand on the wall. And the same night, he was killed. Why? Because he refused to honor God. You can write down the book of Daniel chapter, I think chapter number 5 from verse number 21. 21, 22, all the way to 31. That is where the story is of Belshazzar. He refused to honor God. Let me say this. And I say this to myself and to you. Let us learn from the failures of the ones that have gone before us that we will not fail where they failed. We have examples of our forefathers who failed. Let us not fail where they failed. Let us not dishonor God how they dishonored God. So based on this scriptures that we have given you and, and these examples of Pharaoh, of, of Herod, of Nebuchadnezzar, of Belshazzar, then we can be able to summarize the dangers of dishonoring God. The dangers of dishonoring God. Number one, dishonoring God brings untimely death. This is an empowerment service. This is an empowerment service. You need to understand this. This will help you. Dangers, one danger of dishonoring God is untimely death. Number two, it is shame and disgrace. It's a danger of dishonoring God. Number three, it is failure in life. You cannot dishonor God and succeed in life. So one, number three danger of dishonoring God is failure in life. Number four is unanswered prayers. You cannot dishonor God and expect him to answer your prayers. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord are going round all the earth looking for the people that fear him, that he may help them. So if you are dishonoring God, then God cannot hear your prayers. He will not hear and he will not answer. In fact, the Bible says he blocks his ears. So if you want your, your, your prayers to reach the ears of God, honor him. If you want your prayers to be answered, Honor him. Number five danger of dishonoring God is that it attracts curses into your life. It attracts curses into your life. And that's what happened to the sons of Eri, Phinehas, and Hophni. And the entire lineage of Eri. Now, it is not a simple thing when God says that in your lineage, everybody that will be born after you, they will never see 50 years. They will die at their prime. It is a curse. So to avoid a curse from God, and let me say this, let me say this a curse from God is not like a curse from your father. It is not. There is a difference. You know, when your father curses you, God can intervene. But when God curses you, no man can intervene.
So it is very important, very crucial to honor God. So now, the question is, as we finish, how do we honor God? How do we honor God? Number one, we honor God by living holy lives. We honor God by living holy lives. Number two, we honor God by giving him all the glory for all that he has done for us, for where he has brought us from, for what he has made us to be, we must give all the glory to him. This is a way of honoring God. Do you know why Nebuchadnezzar was made an animal for seven years? Because God enabled him to excel in his kingdom. But he refused to acknowledge the hand of God in his excelling, in his success. So every time you do not acknowledge the hand of God in your success, it means you are dishonoring him. So the way to undo that dishonor is by giving glory to God for all that you are and for all that you have. Number three, by allowing his word to take the highest place in your life. By allowing his word to take the highest place in your life. That his word is number one. Whatever he says is number one. Whatever his word says, is you put it as number one in your life. Number four is by totally surrendering you are alive to him. Or by sur surrendering, you are alive totally to him. Number five, trying to end up. Number five way of honoring God is by loving what he loves and hating what he hates. Number five way of honoring God is by loving what he loves and hating what he hates. Number six way of honoring God is by following him and serving him. It is by following him and by serving him. Let me say this, whatever or what you honor, you will value. So if you honor God, you will value him. What you honor, you will allocate time to that thing. So if you honor God, you will allocate time to him. Valuing God means putting him number one in your life. So if you honor him, then you will value him. And this means putting him as number one in your life. If you honor him, then you will allocate him time. You will spend time with him. It shows that you are honoring God. Let me say this. God is worthy to receive the highest honor. Why? Because he is above all. If you honor men, you are supposed to honor God very highly. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, tell them, God seeks honor from you. <coughs> And let me say this, because I'm, 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 I'm almost finishing. When you honor God, there are some things you don't do. 
there are some places you don't go. There are some words that cannot come out of your mouth. Why? Because you honor him. Now, look at Joseph. In, in, when you read the entire Genesis 39, Joseph is in a fallen land, but Joseph honors God. He is chased for two years. Now hear this. It is very important for you to understand this. The way you hear that, that Potiphar's wife wanted to sleep with Joseph, it is not as simple as you think. It had taken almost two years. Every day, prodding Joseph, enticing Joseph. And Joseph said, how can I do this wicked thing? Why? Why is Joseph speaking like that? Because he honors God. He knows nobody will know. But because of the honor he has for God, there are some things he cannot do even if no one will know. Let me say this. And please never forget. Whatever you do when nobody is watching is what determines whether you honor God or not. I'll say that again. Whatever you do when no one is watching is what determines whether you honor God or not. There are people that pay lip service to God. They come to the house of God. They want us, they want to impress us that they honor God. But they know in their heart they don't honor him. And that is why the Bible is saying in Matthew 15 verse 8, they only honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. I want to say this, and I said it the other day. There are benefits of honoring God. And let me say this. Honor responds to honor. I'll say that again. Honor responds to honor. He's saying in that verse 30, the last sentence, the, the last part of that particular verse, that I will honor those that honor me. He says, for those who honor me, I will honor. Honor responds to honor. And he is saying, to those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Those who despise God, he will also despise. Those who dishonor God, he will also dishonor. But those who honor God, he will honor. He will honor. Let us cultivate a lifestyle of honoring God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, cultivate a lifestyle of honoring God in everything that you do. Wherever you are, let it be a lifestyle of honoring God. When you are speaking, speak in a way that you are honoring God. Wherever you find yourself, have a lifestyle that is honoring God. That whoever meets you, they can say this man honors God. Whoever you speak to, they will be able to identify that this man honors God. Let us cultivate a lifestyle of honoring God in everything that you do. I challenge us, let, let us not take God for granted. I'll say that again. Let us not take God for granted. Don't allow yourself to be familiar with God. Let us not take God for granted. And let us not allow ourselves to be familiar with God. All these people... They had gotten familiar with God. They never honored God. But for us, it shall not be the case. We shall honor God. Lift up your hand and say, I shall honor God. Say as you mean it, in the name of Jesus, 
I declare I shall honor God. That Hophini and Phinehas and the entire lineage of Eli, they received a curse for not regarding God, for not honoring God. I declare that shall not be your portion. That shall not be your portion. God will honor you because you will honor him in Jesus' name. Now, lift up your hands and say, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to honor God. Say again, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to honor God. So, we must also honor what God honors. That is also a way of honoring God. Whatever he honors, when you honor it, then you are automatically honoring God. Anybody blessed today? Then put your hands together for the Lord. I'll repeat this as I wind up. Let all of us cultivate a lifestyle of honoring God in whatever thing that we do. And I will say this, that honoring God is the gateway of success in life. Honoring God is the gateway of success in life. Honoring God is the gateway of success in life. You cannot honor God and be grounded in life. You cannot honor God and be a failure in life. You cannot honor God and be disgraced in life. You cannot honor God and remain barren in life. Because honoring God is the gateway to success in life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. I've spoken as you have inspired me to. And I pray, Father, the Lord, you will envelop us with grace to be able to honor you. Help us to develop a lifestyle of honoring you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Where we have dishonored you, Father, we ask you to forgive us. Where we have dishonored you with our actions, Father, forgive us. Where we have dishonored you with our words. Father, forgive us. And help us by your grace to cultivate a lifestyle of honoring you in everything that we do. I pray for everyone that is here, oh God. And everyone that is watching us online. As we purpose to honor you. Lord, give us success in our lives. Give us breakthroughs. Give us victory in all areas of our lives. Let your will be done in each one of us. We thank you, Father, and we worship your name. Help us not to be familiar with you. 
help us not to take you for granted that we shall continue to esteem you highly to regard and respect you highly for you alone is God all we are all we will ever be it will be because of you we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor in Jesus precious name we have prayed everybody shout a big amen then put your hands together for the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ it is very important to honor God as I said what you are today and what you will ever be it is because of him what you have today and what you will ever have it is because of him what this ministry is today and what this ministry will ever be it will be because of him I want to say you are not the function of the hand of man you are the function of the hand of God let us not take God for granted. Let us not become familiar with God. Let us give all the glory to him. Let us honor him for everything. Because as I said, I, 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 I wrote today, there are some battles. Is it today or yesterday? There are some battles that are bigger than us. But there is no battle that is bigger than God. That God that takes over the battles that are bigger than you, he is worthy of all the honor, of all the praise. Your marriage is together because of him. You are alive because of him. You are well because of him. You are here because of him. He deserves all the honor. Give God a praise. that lifestyle of honoring God, you will not be a failure in life. The people that were waiting for you to go down, they will wait forever. Why? Because you have cultivated a lifestyle of honoring God. No battle can overcome a man that honors God. No battle. They may dig pits so that you may fall. But before you get there, because you honor God, Jehovah will cover them. They will put snares, but God will break their snares because you honor him. They will conspire against you, but God will nullify the conspiracy because you honor him. I know what I'm talking about. I have passed through hell and high waters. I know what I'm talking about. When you honor God, no enemy can defeat you. They can do everything. But as long as you honor God, Jehovah will deliver you from the hands of the enemy. Okay. We want to give a clap offering to the people who are watching us online. We say, Kwaheli, we will see you on Sunday. Sunday morning at 10:15. Uh, please join us that day so that we may be able to worship together, to praise God together, and even to hear the word of God together. Again, celebrate those people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ.